Hello, good morning, good evening, and um, today we are talking about two golden rules for givers, which if you are someone that follows my channel, you're a well-being warrior, you've read my book, um, then I am willing to bet that you are one of life's wonderful givers, one of the people in the family, your workplace, your community, where you anticipate what people need. People come to you with their problems, come to you with their emotions, with their logistical issues, and you kind of, you pick up, you put up, you give love, you carry the load, you help to fix, you nurture, you mend. Um, and that all just actually comes really pretty naturally to you. Um, and you would be, I am willing to bet, known that you are, yeah, one of life's givers. You are an amazing <laughs> uh, part of uh, what makes life tick, basically. Um, so I want to talk about what, well, it's quite obvious why givers get burnt out, right? Because they give past their own natural limits and they will give to others before they replenish to themselves. You all know that. We've done that on other episodes. What I want to talk about today is like two golden rules for givers so that you don't get completely burned out, right? I know you love giving, right? But but if you burn out, um, not only are you giving from a place of resentment, um, which is you know, other people can feel that and it is not good for you. Um, but you know, secondly, fizzy fizzy physically and physiologically you start to burn out you get tired you've got less to give and nobody wants that either it's not sustainable long term okay so that is what we're going to talk about today let me know give a heart or a like if you think you might be one of life's givers like I say if you follow me I suspect that you are I tend to attract and work with really busy <laughs> and amazingly sort of empathetic, intuitive, uh, giving women on the whole. Um, and so um, I very much suspect that if you are with me, you are one of life's givers. So you need this information so you don't burn out and so that you can give to people from a place with no resentment and a place of replenishment within yourself. So the first golden rule for givers is that um, limits need to be set on giving, right? But they they have to be set by you, by the giver, all right? Not the taker. Because here's the thing, givers are going to give and takers are going to take. And that is the role that we have, the personalities that we have. And if you think about it, what do you educate the people that, take from you and that you freely give to you educate them that you you love it you've always got time you've always got the energy it's never too much trouble you they're not really putting you out it's not a burden you're not going out of your way and you're educating them on that because you keep doing the stuff right <laughs> the the only natural conclusion for them to draw is you are super happy with this arrangement, okay? And it's working really, really well for them, super well for them, okay? So they don't need to set limits or change anything, and they are not going to, okay? They love the way that it's working for them, all right? So even though we might think, God, I, you know, I picked that kid up four times in the last two weeks, surely they're gonna offer soon, you know? Like you, because you're a natural giver, these things are obvious to you. You assume that they're going to set a limit soon, okay? But actually, it's working really well for them, and they're assuming you're happy with it because that also suits them, okay? So in this situation, it is your job. It is always the giver's job to set the limits, okay? So it's your time, your energy, your attention, and it's your job. Your job is to set the limits on, yeah, I can help you out with that, or do you know what, sorry, I'm up to here this week, I'm afraid that's just not gonna be possible, okay? So 
you ha- it's your job to define what you're comfortable with. It's your job to say no to stuff. Um, and it's your your job to um, define what you're comfortable with in terms of your limits, right? Of your time, your energy, your attention. Um, when we leave that job for someone else, it will not get done, right? And that is when we get depleted, okay? So it is your job to set the limits and you have to set them out loud, okay? Not just in your own head, right? You have to set it out loud with your voice with the other people, okay? So that they also know where the line is and you're like, yeah, super happy to do that for you, but you know, you're going to need to figure out another plan for this. Okay, good luck with that. I'll see you later. So um, you have to say it out loud. Like you cannot assume that they will know because the whole situation you've set up is working for them. Okay, so it's being able to give freely because you're giving from um, the capacity that you have. And that's where we give without resentment. That's where we give freely. That's where there's this great energy exchange where we get something from being the person that's giving. We love to do the giving and the nurturing and the and the being helpful and all of that. But when we give past the limit of our capacity, we are not giving from that place. We're giving from a place of obligation, of resentment um, and depletion. Okay, but only you know where that limit is for you and you need to voice that out loud for yourself. Okay, so that is golden rule number one. It's your job to set the limits. All right. Does that make sense, guys? Give me a little comment. Um, Let me know um, if that makes sense. And I'm going to go on to your second golden rule. I want to keep it really tight this week. Two rules so you can really keep them in mind. Okay, so second rule for you beautiful givers out there is that it might not come naturally to you, but it is okay for you to be the person that takes every now and again, okay? So it's all right for you to be vulnerable and it's all right for you to ask for what you need. Um, it's important in relationships to have an ebb and a flow and to have some reciprocity okay and to um be able to tell people what it is that you need and to be comfortable with the receiving of it okay it it can be if you're not someone that does that very often it can feel uncomfortable to have someone helping you out with things um but if you there are always times in all our lives where sometimes it's our time to take okay and being comfortable with going you know this is my time to take you know I'm up against it I'm between a rock and a hard place here I need to ask for some help so whether it's some compassion some understanding some logistical help financial help emotional help whatever it might be ask for what you need and then be gracious and comfortable with the receiving because if you are habitually the giver and you push back offers of help you don't have that flow and reciprocity. And actually, it's really lovely for other people, particularly when it's someone that very rarely takes, for them to be able to give something to you. So it's like receiving a compliment or receiving a gift or receiving a bunch of flowers. It's so much nicer when that person says, oh my God, thank you, they are beautiful. What a surprise, you've made my day, rather than, oh, well, I don't really need flowers and you shouldn't have you know, that does not make the giver feel good. Okay, so be a gracious receiver and be okay to ask for it. Um, I've got a lovely mantra around this. And it is that we give when we can, but we must take when we must. Okay, so be okay when it's your time to take and enjoy that reciprocity. Okay, because givers also need looking after, you know, we're not bulletproof. Okay, we need boundaries and we need reciprocity. 